Welcome to another video from Cardboard East. My name's Jay. I play board games from Asia and share what I find with all of you. Today, we're gonna talk about <laughs> soccer or football. The one thing you need to take away is that I'm not the biggest fan of football. I, I, it just doesn't resonate with me. I grew up in Texas, so I grew up with American football and that's what I kind of knew and I, that's the tempo of a sport that I like to watch and I'm engaged in. But I have been playing a football game and I am, I am obsessed with this game. And I am talking about Magic Number 11 from Korea, Pluto Games. And it is, it's, I just, I can't, I can't stop thinking about it. But before we get started, if you like what you see here and you wanna see more, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. If you wanna help the channel grow even more, please consider joining our Patreon. We have multiple tiers that allow you to become a producer, having your name on all our videos. You have access to weekly vlog videos that are exclusive to Patreon supporters. And we also have a monthly board game giveaway where I'm just giving away games for free. It's a raffle, only one person wins. And on to the show. Welcome to magic number 11. Here is a player board and several cards. This board breaks off into sections, as you can see here, so that way they could fold up and fit inside the box. Now, what's really interesting is that you can see this is shaded, so light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. That way you know how the pieces orient uh, with each other, how they should be orientated. And then this side, according to this side, is the home, and then here is the away. But they are absolutely symmetrical, and even the cards that you have are the exact same, except they are slightly mirrored differently. So this center back will have this plus symbol on the other side for the opposing team. In order to set up for the game, first you can take this little control marker here, put it here. You can take these little soccer balls, which have this almost supreme uh, brand look to them. We're gonna be placed over here. And then you'll have three types of cards here. You'll have the penalty kick, you'll have the synergy cards, and then here's the other penalty kick card here as well. You also get one of these, which is a nice little player aid, and it's quite handy, but after a while, you won't need to use this at all. And it's a shame that they only have one. I really would have liked to have had two in the game because that way each player has one and you don't have to share. One of my favorite things about the game are these point cards here. I apologize for the glare. And then you simply, if you score a goal, you place it here. So now you know it's one to zero, and then you can flip it over, and now it is two to zero. And for some reason, it went all the way up to eight, even though I've never played a game that went up that high. And then in addition to your own home player cards, you have the away player cards. And again, they are roughly the exact same, just slightly mirrored differently. You also have these star player cards, which are really powerful players, and they have a lot more icons, and they're just a lot more focused with what they do. And now this doesn't make any sense to you right now, but how you play the game, the first thing you're gonna do is after you set up, you're gonna give these a quick little shuffle, and then you're gonna deal out three cards here, and then you are going to draft. The away team is gonna take one of these cards, the home team is gonna take one, and then this one goes back in the box, and then you're gonna do that again where the home team now chooses, so maybe they want an attacker, this one will take the killer passer, and then this one will go away and do that one last time with three more star players, and the away team uh, picks first, so maybe they want this line breaker, and then the home team picks target man because he gets a free shot, why would you not take this card? And then this one, oh look at that, costs out two defense, well let's just, let's just take that and put that there. And then once that's done, once that draft is done, then you're ready to play the game. The players will have 10 players here, three star players, and then you're gonna look at those and you're gonna decide which ones you're gonna put out here. So let's just take all our star players and we're gonna put them out here. And then we could sub for them later. And then you'll take these cards, spread them out, and then you're ready to begin the game. Now before we get started into how the game plays, I wanna talk card placement first. If you notice here, there's this red line, a green line and a blue line. And you also have three types of cards. You have the red, green, and blue. And that simply is that the red cards must be placed so they are adjacent to the red line. And you're gonna have to cover up two of these rectangles here. And you'll notice that this makes a little soccer ball here and we'll go into why that's important in just a little bit. But you must cover it up completely. You can't do something like that. That's a no, no. That's a yes, yes. Even though you probably wanna do something closer to that. 
Similarly, the green card must be placed where it's touching the green line. So a green card can never be up here, it can never be down here, but it can be here. And you maybe wanna match it to where it makes another soccer ball there, and we'll talk about more why that's important. And then also, like your blue cards, just like the red cards, they have to be touching this blue line. So you can't place it here, you can't place it here, but on these two rows you can. And if you notice, if you place them here right in front of the goal, well then he creates two little shields here and we'll talk about why that's important in just a little bit. How to play magic number 11. Now in order to do this, I'm gonna jump ahead to the middle of a game, so that way you have a better idea of how to play. On your turn, you're gonna do one of two actions. First, you're gonna do a team action, and then you're gonna do an individual player action. So your first, you're gonna do a team action. And on the team action, you have one of two choices. You do one for arrows, or two, you will do cards. So let's look at arrows. Let's see here, I'll look at all the arrows that I've made with my cards by playing them down. I have one, two, three, four. These are the little arrows that are made with the cards. So I do four, and I can move this control counter up four spaces. So one, two, three, well I maxed out already, I don't have to do four. Or, instead of that, I could do cards. In which case I'll look at all the plus symbols, so one, two. Well, not great on card draw, but one, two, and then I'm gonna go to the synergy deck and I'm gonna draw two cards. And you can see that there's a little plus here to help remind you of that. What does those look like? Well, they look like this. So three and four. There's a range of these. There's a one star and there's five star. Three is the most prevalent, and then two and four, and then one and five are the most rare. But I do also wanna mention that the cards, you have a hard hand limit of five, no more than five. So if you already have five cards, you can't draw any more cards and you have to force to do arrows. If you have four cards, well then you'll just draw one instead of two. But we're gonna do an arrow action here because that way I can show you one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna move this up one, two, three. Well, I maxed out, I don't have to do the fourth one. And now I do my individual player action. And you're gonna have one, again, of two choices. Either I play a card and may kick, may kick, or I choose a card that's already on the board and I must kick. So let's go ahead and do the May kick first. So I'm gonna put this card anywhere on my tableau. Again, it's a red card, so I must touch the red line. I'm gonna place him right here. That way he creates three soccer balls and an extra arrow. So I could even drive even further when I want to. Now I may shoot and I'm gonna try and do that. So I'm gonna take my Supreme soccer ball right here and then place it onto the card. Now I place this one on any of the made soccer balls, I'm just gonna place it right here. And then now I look over here and you can see home and you see this little arrow that points up here. This is red. Then I look over here to the right and I see blue, green, red. So that means that I could play three cards. Now the first card must come from the synergy deck. So I'll take this deck card here, place it here. And then the other two cards must come from my hand. And let's go ahead and look at my hand. And I'm gonna do, let's see here. I think I'll do three and four. I'm gonna go ahead and place those here on there. And then I am done. Now, after I did that, the defensive player, well, they could play two cards. Now, if you notice on this side here, you'll see defensive cards. So if this were the defensive player's side of the board, you'll see that the first card must come from the deck. And the second card, well, they can come from the deck or from their hand. And there's give or take of reasons why you wanna do that. Let's say the defensive player is gonna take two cards from the deck and they're gonna place them uh, over here onto the board. Then what's gonna happen is the attacker is gonna reveal. So now you're gonna look at the soccer ball. So one, two, three soccer balls. And then you reveal your cards. So three plus one is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That's 11. Now this game is called magic number 11. And that's because if all the stars and this add up to 11, then you get a goal perfectly. So there's no matter what the defensive played, you get a goal. So you're gonna take the one here because you scored one and you're gonna place it over here on the scoreboard and now you have a goal. But let's say you didn't get 11. Maybe you shot over 11. So let's say instead of that one, you got a three. So that's three, six, 10, 13. If you ever get 12 or more, you automatically miss. You miss the goal. So therefore your turn is over. You're gonna take this shot. 
token and you flip it over. And that means that this person got tired, so instead of a power of three, they only have a power of two. Or there's another choice, and that is maybe, just maybe, instead of having 12, maybe you got 10 or fewer. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So therefore, your power is 10. And then you go to the defensive side. And the defense side, they're gonna do something similar. They're gonna count up all their shields. So for example, look at here and just pretend it's over that side. They have one, two shields that they made with cards. So that's a base of two. And then they're gonna reveal their synergy card. So two, oh, five, that's seven, eight, nine. Therefore, that's nine to your 10. Therefore, you score a goal. And then you could take this one here and put it here. Yay, you still win. But there are a few more things that can happen. Let's say, for example, it's a tie. So let's say it was 10 versus a defense of 10. Tie goes a defender. You don't score a goal. Or maybe, just maybe, the defense flips over a card and it's one of these rare tackle cards. Now, the tackle card only takes effect if it's played by the defensive player. If the offensive player plays this, it doesn't do anything. But let's say the defensor pulls this. It's a tackle. Therefore, you go into a penalty kick. I know, I know, this is wild, this is wild. So the attacker is gonna take these five cards and they're gonna flip them over and you're gonna choose one of these five cards. And it's basically, you're gonna kick the ball to one of these five areas here. And then you're gonna choose one of these cards and the defensive player, well, they're gonna take their five cards and you can see that they block two of those five areas, meaning that they have like a 40% chance of guessing it right. They're gonna choose a card, they're gonna take it from the thing and play it and then they're gonna reveal at the same time. And then you realize that yes, the defensive team blocked it. Good job, defensive team. And again, if the attackers got that penalty kick, then they would be able to score a point and put it on the scoreboard. And that is the main way that you do defense. Now, defense cards always play two. They always play two. And as I said, they either both come from the deck. The first one always comes from the deck. The second one comes from your hand or the deck. It's completely up to you. Why you want to do that, we'll talk about that more. I mean, obviously, you could, you could get a tackle card and then play into the tackle card if you think you're going to lose that attack. But let's go back to what we said before between doing the team action and an individual action. You had a choice to play a card and shoot or use an existing card and shoot. Now, here we are in a future turn. And again, it's my turn. I'm the home team. And again, I must do a team action and then an individual action. So for the team action, I'm gonna draw a card. So let's say pluses, that's two pluses. So I'm gonna draw two cards from the deck. Oh, I'll get a one and a three. Not great, but I'll deal with it. Then I do an individual action. I could either play a card and add it to the field and may shoot, or I could choose an existing card and must shoot. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the striker here, take my Supreme Soccer Ball, add it down, and now it's one, two, and then I'll play my cards. I check here, oh look, unfortunately I'm at the blue phase here, so I can't really play many cards. And then here you notice that I must choose a card from the deck. So now I'll place this card here from the deck and then I'll just see how well I do. Now there's a few more rules to get involved in. The most important one is the substitution. When you get the game, you can have 10 starting cards and then three uh, extra like star players. And so you have 13 cards. You're gonna take three cards and put them over here in the sub area. So you have sub one, sub two, sub three. You don't have to sub them in order. At any point in the game, even at the halftime, you can take a card that's on the field or a card that's still in your hand uh, down here below and then you would remove it from the game and then you'll take another card and then add it to your hand. You can never take a sub and add it directly to the field. You always put it back into your hand. And this creates a little bit of flexibility in the gameplay, so that way you can remove cards that aren't really working for you, or you could sub them out to get cards that are even more powerful. And this one could do a lot more defense here by adding pluses and increasing your draw if that's what you want to focus on for that point of the game. But how does the round end? Well, you'll see the synergy deck, and when you have a discard pile, the discard pile is always placed face down, so that way no one can count. And then you'll take whatever's here, and if at any point in the game, if someone draws more cards than there are in the draw deck, you'll take the discard, shuffle it up, and then finish that out. And then that person will finish their turn as normal. And then the next turn, they will have the final turn of the round. And then they cannot take a team action, they can only take an individual player action. And then as soon as that's done, 
the round is over. The other person does not get a turn. If it becomes halftime, well then you'll wipe the board, you put it here, you leave your substitutions alone. You can sub if you want to, but you don't get to refresh your subs. So once you sub them out, that's it. Then to begin the second round, play it the same way, ends the same way, and then whoever has the highest score wins the game. And in true football fashion, if it's a tie, it's a tie. If you want to, you can end the game with a penalty kick to see who has the tie. This could be a tiebreaker, but because I like to keep the game more in the spirit of actual football, it's a tie, it's a tie. Sorry, Ted Lazos of the world. That's just the way it is. I just... I just, I can't, even teaching this game, I want to play it because it's only like 30 minutes and it's, ah, oh, it's just, something about this game just really, really resonates with me. I don't, I, I don't know, no, I know what it is. It's just, it's just, it's fun and it's simple and the theme is integrated so well into the gameplay. I love that they got all these little elements of football into the game and it's, and it's just this tiny, tiny small box. But there are these boards inside, and it, it it's, ends up becoming much bigger than you think it is. And I, I find that really, really fascinating. I love, the, I love that you have like a team action, and you have an individual player action. I love that there are these all-star uh, players, and that you get to draft them. I love that you get to put some players on the side, and then you could sub them in later. I love that there are tackle cards and then i love that there are penalty kicks i love the the scoring cards where it just looks like a scoreboard i love that it's a low scoring game and i love that there are two halves of the game and i love that if it's a tie it's a tie it's, it's so surprising how it captures all these little moments of of football and just puts it into a nice little breezy card game that takes like 30 minutes and Going now, going past the theme and gameplay integration, the actual card play is is quite fascinating. Even like from the get go, the the first time you play, you're thinking to yourself, "Do I defend, or do I just go for a quick and easy attack?" You know, there are these little ideas there. And so as you're playing it out, you're playing these cards in your tableau. You're trying to think, "Well, do I want to focus more on synergy cards? Do you want to focus more on those red arrows?" And you're just driving that attack in. And there's this nice ebb and flow, and it's. Interesting because that team action where you're choosing to A, draw cards, or B, drive, it, it puts this interesting notion of like, well, I need to draw a lot of cards first. So that way, on my next turn, I could drive and attack. But I need to build those arrows up, right? And then I get a lot of cards, then I drive, and then I kick. And it's this interesting idea of how you could see your opponent. Like they're slowly building up like that drive, and then you're gonna build up your defense. Because your defense, all you could do with defense-wise is just like build up that defense, putting all those goalies on the bottom, so you're building up those natural shields. But there are those certain players that are just really good, and they eliminate one of your shields right off the bat. And it, it it reminds me of like these old school like Super Nintendo games of of like Super Dodgeball or like these very cartoonish style games but all these characters on these games are just so powerful and strong and i love that you draft them i love that you can remove a player and then sub someone in i think that is really fun and interesting although i i, I really haven't figured out how to do that successfully or if i'm just kind of playing off the cuff either way i think it's it's really interesting i love how there's this idea of magic number 11 we're trying to get to 11 but you don't know what one of the cards is now, granted, you should know what the breakdown is of the cards, how it averages at three, and then like there's a few two and fours, and there's very few five and ones. So I, I do think that part is a little interesting. I'm curious, though, why there are so few tackle cards. I, I think that'll be, I, I mean, obviously, you wouldn't want it to be too outlandish and too crazy, but I don't know, like just having all the ones, those three one cards, all be tackle cards, I don't, I don't see that as an issue. I think that it's... It's really interesting. And sometimes I've been in a position where I was on defense and I actually drew one of the tackle cards. And so when they kicked, I knew that I was going to, to lose. I was only hoping that they would get under, you know, 10 or under, so then I could reveal my cards. So I played that tackle card, it happened. And then I played it, I tackled them, and they would have probably gotten a bigger hit because their attack was far more than my defense. But I had a 40% chance with those penalty kicks 
and I guessed correctly, and that helped me win the game. And it was, it was like stand up, like cheering. I was, I was, I was just excited. It was, it was amazing. And just having that moment, that shared moment with your opponent of like, oh, it's coming down to a penalty kick. And you know, and you're looking at each other and you're trying to get into each other's minds about that little aspect. And it's, it's, it, this, this game just does so much with, with so little. Ultimately, you and your opponent are doing the same thing, just like, you know, football. But it's, there's this interesting back and forth that happens where you can see that, okay, they're drawing lots of cards. They're, I got to, you know, make sure that I have enough cards or they're pushing forward on their advancing. Uh, I need to push that back so I can get my attack up. And there's this constant back and forth and you're constantly choosing between moving the control marker or drawing cards. Do I have more control or do I have more cards? And it's an interesting trade-off and it's an interesting trade-off of how you're playing off of your opponent. And one of the interesting things that you don't think about is that there's this idea of, well, I just want to use cards as much as I can to try and end the game. I'm ahead, I'm gonna burn through all these synergy cards as much as I can, so that way I can end the game a little bit faster. And I think that extra layer is, is really, really fascinating. And I love how the players, once they kick, like they get weaker, you know, they're getting tired. And then they're slowly getting weaker and weaker and then you sub them out with someone else. I also love that you're forced to shoot. You're forced to kick because people are always trying to make goals. And it's, it's really interesting to see how that can burn through cards. There's just so much little hidden layers here that it's just so much fun to explore. Now, let's, breaking down the, the feels and the vibes of the games, uh, going back to the actual components, I'm, I'm really happy that the, the iconography in this game is super smooth and very easy to understand. Like, lightning bolt happens now. Oh, there's this, and a little faded. Okay, let's draw two, keep one. And it's, it's very, very clear. And, that, and that's really important because that eases up more mind space so that you can focus on the game and get into the mind space of your, the head space of your opponent. Now, I haven't played a lot of football games. Uh, I mean, I haven't played, I mean, there's foosball and there's this and there's another one, but you know, I, I like this. I like this a lot. And even though it comes in a small box, those boards that unfold take up quite a bit of space and, it's, and it feels like a full board game, but it's just in this tiny little box and it's, it's so surprising. And I think that if you are a big football fan and you love board games, I think this is something you should definitely add to your collection because I think it does the sport justice and it definitely has that feel to it, that nice cerebral, cerebral, cerebral feel to the game. The one thing that I don't like about the game is that there's no solo mode. And I wish there were a solo mode and not just a solo mode, but I want solo team bots that I'm playing against. I want to play like teams from different countries and, and have each country feel, have its own little personality of how they feel and how they play. I would, ah, I would love that. That would be so cool. And it could be a nice campaign with like these brackets that you're slowly fighting your way up like that. That to me would be, would put this game way over the top. But I mean, as it is, it's just a nice little two player game. And I kind of wish they, they added a little bit more. But I'm talking way too much. You saw the tissue, you saw the cards, you saw how to play. If you're not instantly hooked or intrigued just by that alone, I, I don't know what else to tell you because man, this is a game that's not leaving my collection in a while and it's, it's really good. And it has me questioning all sorts of content I wanna make in the future. I made a top 100 board games from Japan list and now I'm thinking about a top 100 board game list of all of Asia and I honestly think that this is going to be really high up there. And I just, I can't stop thinking about it. And it's one of those games where you read the rules and you're like, oh, this is so much better than I thought it's going to be. And then you play the game and you're like, this is even better than I thought that was. And I already thought it was going to be great. And now you're just gleaming about it and telling everyone about it. It's like, play this game with me. Play this game with me. Play this game with me. And that's what Magic Number 11 has done. For me and I am now hooked on Pluto games any game they come out with I'm instantly going to try it because this game 
knocked my socks off. Once again, my name is Jay. I play board games from Asia and share what I find with all of you. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, please like and subscribe and don't miss our next video. And also, please consider joining our Patreon. I'm going to put a link up here to a video that I think you'll enjoy. See you there.